A number of comments on recent videos have posed the question, what is a defensive weapon? So I thought I would do another video on this subject because there are a number of websites either describing what they call defensive weapons or even selling items, articles that are to be used as defensive weapons that are perhaps disguised as ordinary everyday objects, but when the time arises, can be used as what they call a defensive weapon. And it's understandable that a lot of you might get confused with the different terms that are frequently used on the internet. For example, defensive weapon as against offensive weapon, bladed article as against knife, or articles with a blade or point to name a few. So whilst you must not take this video as a replacement for formal legal advice, I hope to clear up some of the confusion here. But first of all, if you are new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law, so please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. That helps us grow our legal database of videos and you won't miss out on anything. So coming straight to the point, before I get into a little bit more detail, there is no such thing as a legal defensive weapon in the United Kingdom that you can carry for the sole purpose of self-defense. And I'm going to explain why. But starting off by way of contrast and perhaps a little easier to understand, possessing a knife or pointed article in a public place without good reason is an offense under section 139 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988. There is an exception under that section which is a folding pocket knife which is a knife that is immediately foldable at all times. It does not lock and the blade does not exceed three inches in length. And there are of course certain locations that you must not carry even a pocket knife. But coming back to what people often describe as a defensive weapon would actually be an offensive weapon if it is carried for the intent of using it in self-defense. And this is because section one of the Prevention of Crime Act of 1953 sets out what an offensive weapon is said to be. Section 1.4 defines an offensive weapon as any article made or adapted for use for causing injury to the person or intended by the person having it with him for such use by him or by some other person. And this was refined further in the case of Crown and Simpson to include three broad categories. First of all, items that are offensive in and of themselves. In other words, they've been created or manufactured for the intent of causing someone harm. Various examples of these would be truncheons, batons, various types of knives or butterfly knives or anything that would generally be considered to be a weapon. The second category is items that have been adapted or changed in some way for the purpose of causing harm. For example, taking an everyday glass bottle and taking no other intention applied with that object for the moment, standing alone that bottle cannot really be said to be an offensive weapon. However, if you were to break the bottle, thus exposing a very sharp and or jagged edge on the bottle, which could obviously cause some serious harm, then you've adapted what was an ordinary object into what would be used as an offensive weapon, thus making the bottle in its adapted form an offensive weapon for the purposes of the act. Thirdly, and this is the category that would effectively preclude anything from being a legal defensive weapon, is if the person has this object or item with them with the intent of using it to cause someone else harm. And the two important things to note here are, first of all, it doesn't matter what the object is. You could take any kind of ordinary object out in the street with you, and if you took it for the intention of causing someone harm, that would make that object an offensive weapon. And secondly, and rather importantly, it does not matter whether the person taking the object out was intending to use it defensively as opposed to offensively, which is obviously the worst of the two. But even if you take such an object out with you to use it as a defensive tool or defensive item, even though it may well be an ordinary everyday household object, if your intent is to take it out and use it for the sole purpose of self-defense, it does make that an offensive weapon under the act. Now that's not necessarily to say that if you are in the unfortunate situation of being attacked, that you cannot reach for something to use in your self-defense and any actions taken would then be objectively assessed if you were indeed prosecuted for some kind of assault thereafter. But if you are questioned as to why you were carrying such an item in the first place and your response is that you were carrying it for the purposes of self-defense, then that changes things a little because that would make that most probably an offensive weapon for the purposes of the act. 
So when assessing what your response was in any situation, it will be taken in the light of the fact that you were effectively carrying an offensive weapon, even though it might have been an ordinary household object. And this, I have to say, would be made even worse if it was an item that was designed to look perfectly normal, but was being sold by a website that says this looks like a normal item, but you can use it as self-defense, but because it looks like an ordinary item, you can't get into trouble for carrying it. Quite obviously, if you bought such an item from such a website that says that they are being sold for the purposes of self-defense, it is not much of a stretch to say that you were carrying it for the purposes of self-defense, thus making it an offensive weapon. Now I raise this because many people in the heat and the panic of the moment might well say that they had this thing with them for self-defense. Even if that's not the case and it was just an item that was always in their bag or their backpack, but the words slip out of their mouth that they were using it for self-defense or carrying it for self-defense, all of these things can confuse the facts and the intent of the person at the time. So in other words, if you say something that you don't necessarily mean, you can't unsay that thing and it might make it look worse for you because you've been carrying this item perhaps perfectly normally and legally, but if you say you were carrying it as a self-defense item, that would make it an offensive weapon. There are some items such as rape alarms which effectively make a very, very loud noise which is designed to incapacitate the attacker because the noise is so loud. But I fear there may be court cases to come that will test such items as they get louder and louder as to whether they could be causing harm and whether the intent to use them could you could cause such harm. And as we're on the subject of offensive weapons, I think it's only right to reference banned knives and weapons, which are not only illegal to bring into the UK, but also to possess them even in private unless one of the exemptions applies. These include butterfly knives, which have a blade hidden inside the handle and the handle splits, revealing the blade in the middle, disguised knives where there is a blade or a sharp point hidden inside what looks like an ordinary everyday object, flick knives or gravity knives, those are where they open with a flick of the wrist or with gravity downwards or upwards, stealth knives which are effectively a knife or a spike which is not metal but that is obviously not made for the use at home or food or a toy. Zombie knives that often look a little bit like a saw that contains images or words suggesting that it's going to be used for violence. Also swords with curved blades over 50 centimeters. But remember there are some exceptions which not only include antiques but also swords that are made with traditional handmade methods which usually will mean hand forged carbon steel or folded steel or other methods that have been used before 1954. The restricted list also includes push daggers, blow pipes, telescopic truncheons, batons, hollow coubertins, shurikens, and the list goes on. But I will put a list to those weapons in the description below so that you can look at them for yourself. So I wanted to make this follow up video because I don't want there to be any confusion as to whether or not there is such a thing as a defensive weapon. So in summary, a defensive weapon may well be a weapon that you intend to use it for defense. But please do not confuse that with something that is legal. Because if you say it is a defensive weapon, what you are effectively saying that it is a weapon and you are intending to use it for defense. So effectively, you will be admitting that it comes within the definition of an offensive weapon for the purposes of the act, which amounts to an offense if you are carrying it in a public place. Obviously, I am not and cannot encourage you to lie about such a situation. This is not a loophole that I'm trying to tell you. But what I do strongly advise you is not to just let words slip out of your mouth without speaking to a lawyer first. Because if you say effectively the wrong thing, which differs from your real meaning, this is going to be difficult to walk back after the event and it may well be used against you moving forwards. Which is why I always say you should be speaking to a lawyer if you are under any uncertainty as to what you should say in that situation. So I do hope that's cleared up some of the confusion. Please give this video a like if it's helped you to understand it a little bit. I'm sure there'll be more questions. You can drop them in the box below and I often get to those over at Black Belt Secrets. So please make sure you subscribe there. And in the meantime, stay humble and subscribe.